Architectural Builder Supply is pleased to present you with this recording of the technical question that is listed in the title of this video. This call may be monitored and recorded for quality assurance. Combination smoke and fire seal gasket by Hager. Right. Um, they're trying to apply this to a door that has clearance issues to correct the clearance issues. And my understanding that the product's not listed and tested for that purpose, could you confirm that? I can absolutely confirm that, Mark. That is completely correct. Gasketing doesn't fix a gap problem. Yes, yeah, so I have people frequently that uh, they have a misunderstanding, it seems, about that because they think if I just stick a smoke steel gasket in there, it'll it'll take care of it but it, it doesn't. Um, anyway, I just wanted to confirm that um, with you because uh, I trust your opinion. You know, it, I think it's one of those things where when you pull up NFPA 80 and they give you the the gaps for doors, it's like, you know, how, how much more plainly can they say it? You know, so if you've got a 316th on a wood door and you toss this in there, no, you still have that gap on the door. Um, right. so, you know, it's just sometimes the standard or the code is just so plainly stated that it seems open to, um, interpretation. So, yeah, I mean, if you would like, I can request Hager to put that in writing, but, um, I, I don't know that it's necessary. It's just not approved for that purpose. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, that in some cases would help. You know, to be able to um, forward that to a potential customer or whatever, right? Because um, I, you know, I run, I've run into it on more than one occasion. And what I, what I've already told this individual is that they need to use a product that's listed and tested for clearance mitigation. Yeah. And that would be Crown Fire Door products, National Guard Gap ninety products, Active yeah. Door. Fired products now is out there. I, I don't know of any others, but I've given them all those references. They just don't want to spend the money to put those products in the store. I don't. Well, I mean, yeah, I, I get that, of course. You know, who 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 wants to spend money on doors? Um, yeah. the, the you know the bottom line is life safety. You know, the code is there for a reason. The standard was written for a reason, and yeah. you know it's. And like I tell people all the time, I'm not the code police. I'm just telling you what it says. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm with you. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. I mean, if, I don't want to put you in any extra legwork, but if it's possible, I'd appreciate for that uh, Hager to have a response or weigh in on that. Consider it done. I will send that request to them quite shortly, Mark, and I'll keep you up to date. Okay. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Of course, sir. Thank you. All right. Bye. Architectural Builders Supply hopes you have enjoyed this program. If you are enjoying this video, please click thumbs up or like, and also please consider subscribing to our channel. Let's move on to the rest of the video. Architectural Builders Supply is pleased to present you with this recording of the technical question that is listed in the title of this video. This call may be monitored and recorded for quality assurance. A question of you on the Hager 719. Yeah. I have a client asking me to confirm, verify something that I know, but I, I told them I would, I would call and ask. Is it correct to say that the 719 does not mitigate a gap issue where the gap between the jam and the door exceeds what is called out or permissible in NFPA 80 and that this doesn't mitigate an excessive gap issue. Correct. I, I don't believe any of these uh, yeah. these stick-on uh, weather strippings are, are, are going to be capable of mitigating that. Now, if something comes out of spec because the building settled and no one's had a chance to, 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 to inspect it, with it being intermescent, uh, it, it, it very well may uh, help, but I, I wouldn't 
I wouldn't go off of that just based on uh, the fact that it's, it's still in that gap. Um, it very well may be that, that your, your uh, AHJ is going to ding you on it. Yeah, well said. You know, the bottom line is the AHJ is the authority having jurisdiction. So if it's exactly. good with them, it's good for us. But, you know, it's the product isn't necessarily for that, although it may be found to be acceptable by that person, by the AHJ. Awesome. That's right. all. I, I told my I would yeah, check. I, I, and I'm I would checking. absolutely still shoot for that, that eighth-inch gap. Um, yeah. Even if they come back and say that it's, it's too much, you, you measure it yourself and you say, well, this is what the code says. Are, are, are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. I appreciate your time, sir. Have a very good day. You too. Bye-bye. Architectural Builders Supply hopes you have enjoyed this program. If you've not hit subscribe yet, we would very much appreciate if you did, and hopefully you're enjoying this video. Now, let's get back to it. All right, so let's take a look at the Hager 719. You know, and it's a corner-style self-adhesive intumescent. Intumescent, when it gets hot, it expands. This material absolutely states requires an eighth of an inch clearance. So if you've got less than an eighth of an inch, well, you probably don't need this to begin with, but it would not be the proper material to use because you don't have the margin required to basically fit it in where it has to go. Um, installation instruction, showing you where it's installed, etc. Okay, if you've got beveled edge doors, you know, that's going to really help, but you have to have that eighth of an inch here meaning you have to have it here because when this corner is rotated around here it's going to be awfully close to the jam when it gets through the jam so you need that relief that three degree relief so it doesn't hit the intumescent itself now something very important that you heard that i neglected initially the standard nfpa 80 tells us very clearly what the door gaps are and we're going to look at that in a moment but but the tech support individual stated basically if you submit this to the AHJ, the authority having jurisdiction, the fire marshal, and they accept it, well then it's acceptable. That's all there is to it. Per standard, if the NFPA 80 standard was adopted into the, your local code, that means the standard becomes code. The, the standard slash code is really clear. However, the inspector supersedes all written documentation. If they approve it, then it is agreeable. Now, let's take a look at that standard. So I know that I have my copy of NFPA 80 under the Architectural Builder Supply Manufacturers page. And NFPA 80, one of these I can search. not be this one. Okay, so it may be in chapter six, but I'm just trying to, uh, yeah, search. Let me pause this. And it's actually in chapter five, which is, I believe, care and maintenance is what it, yeah, Chapter 5, Care and Maintenance. And what it says is door clearances do not exceed clearances listed in 4.8.4 and 6.3.1.7. So let's look at 4.8.4. Clearance. Okay, great. The clearance under the bottom of the door shall be a maximum of three-quarter inch. When they use the word shall, that means it must. It's not optional. It's a requirement. If they use the word should, think of it more as a suggestion, but shall means it will not exceed a maximum of three quarter inch. Okay, so that's 4.8.4. Let's go through 4.8.4.1. That's the, the uh, undercut or clearance, not undercut. Forgive me, it's clearance. Undercut something different. Door bottom, okay, this is not related. Let's go back to chapter five and get that other reference to passage which was 6.3.1.7. Clear, uh, okay, let's look. Clearances. 
Ah, this is it. This is exactly what we were looking for. 6.3.1.7, the clearances between the top and vertical edges of the door and frame and the meeting edges of doors and swinging pairs shall be an eighth of an inch plus or minus a sixteenth for steel doors, an eighth of an inch plus or minus a sixteenth, and shall not exceed one eighth of an inch for wood doors. That's it. Now, in all fairness to the owner who wants to use this to mitigate a gap problem, if they get the AHJ to approve, then they're good. They need to, they, they are advised to get that in writing, but they're good. Uh, let's wrap up this video on camera. If you've made it this far into this video, you must be determined to see it through to the end, and we appreciate your hanging in there with us and watching this entire video. It means a lot. It takes a lot of work to create these videos in the sense that, um, you know, it's time taken away from doing other things. However, the advantage for me personally of creating these videos is the fact that it does allow myself to either learn about something new, to uh, reacquaint myself with something, or to reinforce what I believe that I already know. Any comments that you might leave down below would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. Architectural Builder Supply is pleased to present you with this recording of the technical question that is listed in the title of this video. This call may be monitored and recorded for quality assurance. Good. How are you? Good, good. So I wanted to call to say I spoke to Hager, and they verified what both you and I believe to be accurate. But the reason I call is because he did say something that I didn't, the tech support at Hager didn't say something that I ought to have said. When we said earlier, we're not the code police, the bottom line is yeah. if someone submits the Hager 719 to the AHJ and they approve it, well, then it's it's approved. So, right. okay, so I just wanted to be super, I, sh I should have said that, you know, the, the AHJ yeah. is the code police, we're not. So if they're, if they're good, then then that, that's where it ends. I got you. So yeah. uh, an option for the customer would be to submit those yes. product yeah. data sheets to the fire marshal in this case to see if it's something they would approve. Absolutely. Just ask for a review. And the code class that I've been in, probably the same one you've been in, is get it in writing. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Awesome. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, well, I appreciate it. And I appreciate you you know, taking the time to reach out to them and uh, find that out. And, and uh, you know, I always, uh, I'm grateful for your input, as, as always, and thank you for being there. Uh, and I thank you for, for allowing us to, solve, to get the answer. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Bye-bye. Architectural Builders Supply hopes you have enjoyed this program. Regarding the links to ads that you might see in this video, we do apologize for any interruption to a smooth viewing experience. And hopefully the ads that are being presented to you are related to the base product. And if there is something, feel free to click on those and perhaps consider taking a look at what that other advertiser is promoting. Let's get back to the video. So no one's beating up on Hager at all. Um, every manufacturer, whether it be Hager or Reese, I don't think Reese has any intumescent, Legacy or Zero or National Guard or Pemco and other people who specialize in it, unless it's a gap solution, unless it's an item that's specifically tested to take an excessive gap, apply it to the top of the door or whatever you want to do to the stop of the frame and have that tested, it's not used to take a 3 16th gap on a wood door and now all of a sudden stick this into a it on there and now it works for an eighth of an inch gap. Unless, of course, the AHJ, the authority having jurisdiction, the inspector, the fire marshal, approves it. And again, if they approve it, you're good to go. Any questions on this or anything other than anything Hager related, please feel free to reach out to us. I'm partial to Hager because they're always in their tech support department, always ready to answer the phone and always uh, lean into the question and the solution. So to them for that, I say thank you. Thank you very much. Again, thank you for watching. And if you've enjoyed this video, please click thumbs up. Please subscribe and maybe even send the video to someone that you know. Thank you.